All right, multiplying integers, 6.4. Okay, now, let's remind ourselves what integers are. Integers are positive and negative counting numbers and zero. Okay, so negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, then one, two, three, four. Okay, those are all integers. Okay, does include zero. Remember, zero is neither negative or positive. Anytime you multiply something times zero, it's still zero. Okay, doesn't matter if you negative five times zero is zero, six times zero is zero. Okay, doesn't matter if it's negative or positive, it's always zero. Um, All right, now, fortunately, you've been off off for two weeks, and so most of you have probably forgotten the rules for adding and subtracting negatives, which ends up being a little good for this because these are not the same. And so you won't hopefully get them confused until we have a test over them next week or the end of this week. Um, but here's what we've got. If we take and multiply 10 times 2, well, obviously, 10 times 2 is equal to 20, okay? If we take 10 times negative 2, that's equal to negative 20. If we take negative 10 times positive 2, that's equal to negative 20, okay? It doesn't matter which number the negative is with. It doesn't matter which one is bigger, Okay, if there is one negative sign, the answer is always negative. Okay, doesn't matter which one it's with, doesn't matter what the size. In other words, you could say 10 times negative 1. Okay, 10 times negative 1 would be negative 10. All right, so when there's one negative sign, because you can only multiply two numbers together at one time. Okay, it's impossible. Okay, it's mathematically impossible to multiply three numbers exactly at one time. Okay, now, if you had this, negative 10 times negative 2. Negative 10 times negative 2, and this is the one that usually confuses people, okay? Because when you're adding and you have two negatives, the answer is negative. Well, when you're multiplying, it's not, okay? Negative 10 times negative 2 is 20, positive 20, okay? So, if there is two negative signs, the answer is always positive. Okay, let's remember though, we are talking about multiplication. This is for multiplication. Okay, this is for multiplication. Okay, so it doesn't matter. Once again, it could be any number. Negative 100 times negative 5. That's equal to a positive 500. Now, let's say, for example, they give you three numbers. doesn't matter. Negative 4 times negative 4 times negative 2. Okay, it doesn't matter because you can only do two of them at once. Okay, so we follow our rules. Multiply negative 4 times negative 4. How many negatives do we have? In that problem right here, how many negatives? Two. So is my answer going to be positive or negative? 
positive. So that would be positive 16 times negative 2. Now I'm going to multiply these two together. And I have one negative sign. So that means the answer is going to be negative 32. Haley? What do you mean? Like multiplying all of them? Like, you mean on that problem? All you're doing is yeah, you're just multiplying and then you're seeing how many negative signs you have. Okay. Nothing else changes. No, 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 no. We are not. We are talking about multiplication. You do nothing except multiply the two numbers together. And then if there's two negative signs, put a positive sign. If there's one negative sign, put a negative sign. Okay, and that's all you got to do. That's all that we're doing. Yeah, it does not matter. It does not matter the size of the number. I feel like I'm repeating myself. Maybe I said it to this half of the room, didn't say it over there. Okay, it does not matter the size, it does not matter if... If the negative comes first or second, none of that matters. Multiply the two numbers together, and if there's one negative, answer's negative. If there's two negatives, answer's positive. Okay? Let's look at another example. So if I have 15 times negative 2. Okay, so we just take 15. So all we're doing is 15 times 2. What is 15 times 2? It's 30. So 30, and I have one negative sign. So my answer is negative 30. What if you have two positives? Is it positive? Okay, think about what, the, what you just said. We've been multiplying positives together since you were like in kindergarten. Your multiplication tables, those are all positives. We just didn't put the positive sign with them, Okay. <laughs> I mean, those are all positive numbers. We just didn't put the positive sign with the answer. <coughs> okay. Um, all right, this one here. Negative 4 times negative 7. So all I do is I take 4 times 7, which is 28. I have two negative signs, so it's positive 28. Okay. Now, I want you to do this one on your own. 5 times negative 1 times 9. Is it related to this problem? No. All right. Yapper, what'd you get? What? Yes, negative 45. Okay. I'm going to show you two different ways that you could do this problem, and neither one of them it doesn't matter because it's still going to yield the same answer, okay? You have 5 times negative 1. So that's 5 times 1, which is 5, and I have one negative sign. So I put it with my answer. Then I take that times 9, okay? Well, it's 5 times 9, which is 45. I have one negative sign, so I bring it down. So negative 45. I could do it that way, or because of the associative property 
that we've talked about before, I could do this. I could multiply these two together. That's 9 times 1. That's 9. I have one negative sign, so I bring it down to my answer. Now I multiply it times 5. I have 5 times 9, which is 45. I have one negative. Bring it down in my answer. So negative 45. Minus negative 1? Yeah. You could do it 5 times 9, which is 45, and then take 45 times negative 1. Anytime you multiply an answer, anytime you multiply a number by negative 1, you're going to get the opposite of what you multiplied by. In other words, if I had negative 6 times negative 1, what's the opposite of negative 6? Positive 6. So that would be your answer. If you had 6 times negative 1, that's negative 6. That's your answer. Okay? So when you multiply, and, and it proves itself out with the rule. Here I had two negatives. So that means I had a positive. Here I had one negative. So that means I had a negative answer. Okay? Now, let's look at one where they give you a variable expression. For example, b to the fourth power. Well, b to the fourth power means b times b times b times b. Now, they've given us that b is equal to negative 2. So, I put this in here, and that means negative 2 raised to the fourth power, which means negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. So we've got 2 times 2, both of them negatives, positive 4. 4 times negative 2 means 4 times 2, which is 8, bring down my negative sign. Negative 8 times negative 2 means 8 times 2, which is 16. Two negative signs means it's a positive. So it's a positive 16. Now, another one I want to look at, because this is, a conf this is usually confusing to people, is this right here. Okay, negative, negative sign A times B, where B equals negative 2 and A equals negative 5. Okay, so we have negative 5 times negative 2. All right, now, negative 5 times negative 2, I plug those in. We plug that in for A, and we plug that in for B. So here's what we have. Negative sign, then negative 5 times negative 2. Okay, now what you're going to do is this. You're going to take and multiply negative 5 times negative 2, which means 5 times 2, which is 10. I have two negative signs, which make it what? Positive. Positive. But now, I have the negative sign out in front. Okay? And so this, how many negative signs do I have out in front? One. And so that would mean negative 10. Okay? Because when you see a negative sign by itself, they're asking you to do the opposite of your final answer. Okay? So, let's say this would have been this. If it would have been that right there. Negative sign out in front, negative 5 times 2. Okay? Well, that changes a little bit because now we go 5 times 2 which is 10, 
but I have one negative sign, no negative sign, so I bring it down. So there's a negative 10 on the outside, in the end parentheses, and a negative sign on the outside. Now I have two negative signs. I have two negative signs, so that means it's positive, and it's a positive 10. Okay, it all changed because that sign right there. Okay, so I want you to do this one. A to the second power, where A is equal to negative 5. A to the second power, where A is equal to negative 5. Now, remember, we did one very similar to this with our b to the fourth power. We had b to the fourth. <coughs> okay. Okay, Haley. Twenty-five. That is correct. Now, here's what you have. A to the second power means you have negative five raised to the second power. This is negative five times negative five. So that means we take and this, they're using the word evaluate here. Okay, we've talked about that word, but evaluate means that you usually have a variable expression or an expression with exponents, and you take it down to its lowest name, which is, you know, like 22, 23, something like that. So we take 5 times 5, which is 25. We have a negative and a negative, two negatives, so that means my answer is positive. Okay, let's look at this one. 2 times B times C. Where A is, or excuse me, B is equal to negative 2. C is equal to negative 7. Where? Well, I mean, I can I can write this as like that, but it means the same thing. Okay. Anytime you have anytime you have a number beside a variable like that, or a variable next to a variable, it means to multiply, unless there's like an addition or a subtraction sign in there. All right, Copeland, what'd you get? Twenty-eight. That is correct. Okay, could you have two times negative two times negative seven? Now, obviously, what Anthony was asking about just a second ago, 
when you write it with the numbers, you obviously need to have parentheses or something. You can't just write that it is like that. So that looks like 2 minus 7 minus 2. Okay? Can't write it like that. So, you can multiply those two things together, which gives you 2 times 2, which is 4. One negative sign, bring it down in your answer. You have negative 4 times negative 7. Negative 4 times negative 7 is 28. I have two negative signs, so my answer is positive 28. Okay. Now, let's look at this. Negative 9 times P equal 36. We want to use mental math to find the value of the P. Glad to see the holidays didn't change you, Miss Sanders. All right. Nicole, what'd you get? Negative four. P is equal to negative four. That is correct. Now, what they're asking you is this. Okay, that is your answer. They're asking you what number what number times negative nine would equal positive thirty six. Okay, that's what they're asking you in this problem. So you're saying, okay, what times 9 equals 36? Well, 4 times 9 equals 36. Okay, but if I take negative 9 times a positive 4, that gives me a negative 36. So I can't have a negative 36 because I need a positive. So if a positive 4 times a negative 9 gives me po or negative 36, then negative 4 times negative 9 would give me a positive 36. Okay? That's what you're thinking mentally. Okay? That's how you think through that process. Okay? Um, then what about this one? Negative 6m equal negative 60. Negative 6m equal negative 60. All right. Who has an answer? I can move you back to where you're supposed to be. Yeah, I can move you right back there in that, that last row. Then stop. No. Okay, Gracie? What? 10? Yes. M is equal to 10. Okay, because they're saying negative 6 times some number equals negative 60. So, I have one negative here, and it's negative over there. So that tells me 
this has to be positive. And so we ask ourselves, 6 times what equals 60? And it's 6 times 10 equals 60. Okay? Your homework. 6.4, 7, 7 through 10, and 16 through 41. Okay, so you need to get to work on it. If you work hard, you still have 15 minutes in class. You can probably get most of it done. Okay, so get started.